In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. St. Paul tells us in today's epistle reading, Brothers and sisters, he says, When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. And then he continues by saying, Therefore, mortify your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idol worship. He tells us to get rid of all these things. And many of us seem to think that being a Christian is having some sort of good moral standards. But for us, our whole concept, the whole way we live our Christianity is not the way we live morally, only just that. That is a result of everything that happens within us. And what is it that happens within us? What St. Paul says. Christ who is our life. In other words, when we become one with Christ, because Christ is our life, and we are part of the life of Christ, when we love him, then everything else comes out as a result. Many of us attempt to go through our everyday life and try to better ourselves without the love of Christ, without Christ becoming our life. And so, then we set ourselves up for failure. Because even if we, even if we do reach a high moral standard, even if we don't commit adultery or fornication, or that we don't kill or steal or say anything bad about anyone, then we have achieved by making ourselves a God and not what Christ asks us to be, which is humble people that love him. Because Christ can deal with everything. He can deal with our falls, he can deal with our sins and our failures, and he even excuses them for us. He has forgiven them on the cross, but there's one thing that keeps us and Christ apart. And that is, we do not have humility. And ultimately, because we don't have humility, we do not have the love of Christ that we should. St. Paul says that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So therefore, our life is to become one with Christ and now allow his will to come before our very own will and for that to be become united these past few days including today brothers and sisters we celebrated some great saints and personally they're one of my favorite category of saints because even saints come in their different types and categories we call these saints the ascetic fathers a few days ago we celebrated saint paul peter paul of thebes on friday we celebrated saint anthony the great today we say we celebrate saint makarios the great tomorrow we say we celebrate saint ephemios and for many of you these could be just names but for christ and the church the people that I just mentioned were people with great glory who achieved very high standards of holiness. But if I told you how they became holy, many of you would probably even be scandalized and some of you would find it very difficult to believe that that is the way that these men lived and women. We call them desert fathers because they left everything of this world. Some of them were wealthy, some of them were even married, some had families. 
I remember one desert father who we will celebrate in a few days, Saint Peter, who became a disciple of Saint Anthony the Great. He went home one day at the age of 60 and he found his wife in bed with another man. And not having the reaction that we would think he would have, he laughed and said, thank you, take her, because he saw this as an opportunity for him to leave everything of this world. And he went out to the desert to meet Saint Anthony the Great. And in that desert, brothers and sisters, these men and women fought against their own desires and their own passions, fought against our own human nature, because it is nature to have certain desires and certain needs for the body. And this is why we call them angels in the flesh. Because they reach the heights of even surpassing our nature. And making themselves like angels but in a body. They deprive themselves of food, of luxuries, of water. A lot of the times they went for long times without eating or without drinking. Only so they can suppress the desires of the body. And so that their spirit can become one with Christ. Many of us see it impossible to reach heights of holiness in such a way. And not only impossible, probably unnecessary. But these men and women had such a thirst for Christ that they didn't want anything else of this world to come between them and their love for Christ. And they didn't want anything to become a distraction. Obviously, this for us is not something that all of us can do. Not all of us are called to leave this world and go into the desert. But all of us are called to love Christ. And absolutely all of us are called to become holy. And this is what St. Paul says in the epistles. That when Christ appears, we will appear with him in glory. What does that mean? That we will stand side by side with Christ and enjoy everything that he is and everything that he has. Because this is what we have been called for. And the ascetic saints that I just mentioned to you, these desert fathers, knew this very well. And so their whole mentality was, I will deprive myself of everything from this world only so that I can gain my love for Christ and that glory with Him in the eternal life. Life without Christ, as St. Porfirios tells us, is not life. Because without Christ, there is no love. And because if there is no love, it's because Jesus is the source of love. So if anything that we are able to do which is good, we do it as a result of loving Christ. If there's one thing that we can learn from these desert fathers, it's not for us to leave and go out into the desert, as I said, but is the passion, the zeal, and the love that they had for Christ. And they put that in front of absolutely everything because for them Christ was everything. And if we call ourselves Christians and if we believe in an eternal life, a life that never ends, then we need to ask ourselves, if I am supposed to spend eternity with this Christ who I say that I believe in, then shouldn't I love him? Or shouldn't I at least try to cultivate my love for him? Saint Magarius the Great, whom we mentioned and we celebrate today, says not many words are required in prayer. He says to us, pray just by saying, Lord, you know what is good for my soul. Deal with me as you please, as long as I am with you. This is all that we're asked to do. To place the will of God within our own lives. And anything that comes in our path 
to pray fervently and ask Christ to make it something that will help us in cultivating our love for Him more and more. Otherwise, without the love of Christ, we become empty beings and we work just like robots, even, as I mentioned, if we reach a moral standard. Another story that I remembered from St. Macarius, who we celebrate today, was when he has this dialogue with the devil. And the devil says to him, I can do everything that you do, and even better. He says to him, you think that you fast, I don't eat. You think that you abstain and do not fornicate, I don't have a body to fornicate with. You think that you stay up and do vigil and pray all night, I never sleep. And then St. Macarius says to him, then what is the difference between you and me with the devil? And the devil says, you have something which I do not have, and that is humility. When we do not have humility, brothers and sisters, then as good as we present ourselves to be in front of everyone else, we become no different than the devil himself. What Christ asks for us is to have humility, love and repentance. And that's what makes us different. That's how God can work with us and work with our soul. That's how he changes us. And that's how we are glorified with him in the kingdom of heaven. Amen.